Hey, it's Josh here. So much has happened to the world since the last episode of the podcast, but I'm bringing you another one. And this episode is brought to you by Reggie, Kathleen, and Felipe, who support the show on Patreon on a monthly basis. You three have showed amazing support. And now, let's roll episode 92 of the podcast. Hi, this is Daniel Goodman. Dylan Wang from JPerm. Ian Scheffler. Shua Munter from India. This is Alex from Z3Cubing. What's up, guys? This is Jaden McNeil from Australia, and you're listening to the Corner Cutter Podcast. Hey, welcome to the Corner Cutter Podcast. Podcasting since 2014 and cubing since 2015. I'm your host, Josh, and today we are talking about cubing at home. There's another cubing at home competition coming up on may 30th starting at 12 p.m eastern time so make sure you check that out all the details can be found on cubing at home.com wow it's been crazy two months since i last checked in with you guys which was last episode episode 91 I've gotten so much awesome feedback from you all over these two months, and I'm and I'm really surprised how many of you have gone back and listened to the old episodes, or you're a new listener and you've started from the beginning and are currently catching up. I've gotten so many kind emails, and I also did get some pushback on my views and my discussion in episode 91, which was last episode when I was talking about the coronavirus and stuff like that. So I'll make sure to share all your emails in one of the next episodes. I still want your feedback. You can email josh at thecornercutterpodcast.com and I always reply to your emails. And now let's jump right into the interview with Samuel Baird. He's one of the organizers of cubing at home we discuss how cubing at home got started the plans for cubing at home five and much much more it's really interesting so here is our conversation samuel welcome to the corner cutter podcast thanks for having me so i I want to jump right into how QB at Home got started with the coronavirus canceling most competitions throughout the world. And yeah, so could you tell us how it got started and how you got involved with it? So QB at Home really started um, with the online competition that we had here in Utah to replace one of our local competitions. Um, so this was one of the first competitions canceled due to the COVID outbreak. It was called Utah Pie Open 2020. Um, sadly, the venue um, made a shutdown last minute, um, and we didn't really feel like that was a good way to have things happen. Um, so we wanted to hold an online competition. So we just set up a, a small online competition. It had like 40 people, I think, um, something like that. It was pretty small. Um, but after that, we thought it was really fun, and we we saw the need that there was going to be a lot of competitions getting shut down because of this. Um, so we decided we wanted to try and see if we could scale it up a bit bigger. Um, so Calvin Nielsen, he's one of our delegates here. Um, he has some involvement with Cubing USA. Um, so he decided to reach out to them. We reached out to a, a few Cubing personalities, and that's what kind of gave way to Cubing at Home. Huh. So at what point was this? Was this early March? When was this? Um, so this was Pi Day when this started. Um, March 14th. So that's when we did this online, the first online competition, the Pi Day online competition. Um, and then the first Cubing at Home took place March 28th. Okay. So yeah. About two weeks later. Uh huh. It seemed around that time either. The competitions in the Corona hotspots were definitely getting canceled and other ones, they didn't know whether they were going to be held or not. And some still went through. Yeah. 
I know the Cubicle has been sponsoring these events. Could you tell us how they got involved? Um, so Cubicle was gracious enough. We, we asked them if they'd be willing to sponsor, and they've been sponsoring us ever since. Um, so they've been offering, not only have they been offering prizes for our winners, but they've also been offering a lot of gift cards for people watching the stream. Um, so for the past two streams, uh, during the duration, I've been giving out $500 worth of cubicle gift cards each time. Um, and then this next coming competition for keeping at home five, um, they're also giving a thousand dollars if someone can guess a perfect bracket. Um, so, yeah, they've been a great sponsor, and it's been a great opportunity to have them sponsoring us. Nice. Okay. Could you tell us about the one coming up on May 30th? Yeah, so Keeping at Home 5 is going to be really fun. Um, we're going to be holding Killaminks, which is an unofficial event, so we're going to see how that goes. Um, like I said, we will be doing that bracket, um, so we're also going to be featuring... Kit Clement um, on the stream for a bit, and we're going to kind of talk some statistics with him. Um, we're doing Twitch Solves again, which was a, has been a really fun segment for keeping at home. Um, and for those who, who maybe aren't familiar with it, um, basically um, chat is able to solve a cube that we have on stream by typing in moves and voting. Um, so there's voting windows where type well, you'll see a bunch of moves flying in chat. Um, and then after the voting window ends, those moves will be applied. So um, I'm really excited for it. It's going to be a, a load of fun. Um, if anyone's interested in it, go to keepingathome.com to register. Um, all you need is a WCA account. You don't even need a WCA ID, though. So. Yeah. Okay, cool. So if you, even, if you haven't been to a competition yet, all you have to do is sign up for a WCA yep. account, and you can still compete here. Cool. That's really good. Is the competition for just people in the U.S.? Or how does that work? Um, this competition is open for everyone everywhere. Um, our time zones are kind of a little more for people in the U.S. since we know that there's a pretty big um, cubing base here, and we're doing this all through Cubing USA, so we're trying to hit a U.S. audience, but um, especially for the first Cubing at Home, we... We've had people from all over the world. Um, Leo Borromeo, um, poor kid, he, he's been staying up for all these competitions. Um, so yeah, any anyone is welcome. What do you see happening with competitions coming up throughout the rest of the year? Do you think we'll be able to hold them in any state? So we'll, we'll have to see. I know that the board um, is planning on meeting on on this soon and kind of releasing some some more info um whether it be pushing back the date um in which we can't hold competitions or allowing for competitions or allowing competitions with some guidelines in place we'll we'll just have to wait and see mm -hmm. it's a lot up to the states as well right because most states right now aren't allowing gatherings of any size yeah or, even even if the wca does start allowing competitions with some guidelines um just due to local protocols some places may not be allowed to hold competitions for a while so we'll have to see mm -hmm. okay there's kind of like two sides to the cuban community the side the competition side and then everything else is basically online so it's yeah pretty one-sided right now yeah, yeah. What have you been, like, what's your main job and goal with these Cubing at Home competitions? Um, so I've been in charge of communications for Cubing at Home. So I've been the one posting on the socials. Um, I've been helping manage the Discord server a lot. Um, and that's kind of been my job. Um, and then as well as that, I've kind of, everyone on the organization team um, discusses just all sorts of things organization related. So we've been choosing the events. We've kind of been um, trying to plan and figure out a, set, a good set of rules that we're hoping to release soon um, just to make sure that everyone is all good. Um, but yeah, we've, we've been doing a lot of behind the scenes stuff as well. So 
Okay, cool. How do you make sure that people are entering the actual times and they're not cheating? Yeah, so one of our big issues with the very first keeping at home is we were just using Google Forms and anyone, as long as they got on there, they could submit a time under any name they wanted and submit any time and we didn't really have a good system of managing it. So we, we saw a lot of fake results. Um, we saw a lot of people impersonating others, um, especially some of the faster cubers. And so it kind of got really hard to manage results. So um, due to some updates on how we've been doing things, um, we now have a system that will flag results that are 30% better than official results if the competitor has any. Um, we also now have a results team who looks through the results um, as they're coming in live. Um, and then they also do a post-competition result check. Um, because we now have our website set up, we've been able to remove those results. We've been able to ban competitors who have been cheating, um, which has been good. Um, and then to ensure podiums are good, we've also been requiring um, video to make finals or to podium um, just to make sure that they are legit. Okay, good. Glad to hear you have a system behind that. What has, other than that, what has been a big issue that you've run into holding these events? Um, we've run into a few software issues. Right now, we are currently using Discord um, to do all the calls. Um, and there's been a few issues with that. Um, I think we have probably at least like half an hour of just random technical difficulties, um, with this court, every competition. Um, but we're, we're looking into maybe getting some software that makes managing all of our, our guests on the stream a little easier and makes every transition a little bit smoother. So, yeah. How many more competitions do you plan on holding for cubing at home? So we plan on holding competitions pretty frequently for the rest of quarantine. Um, and after that, we hope to make, um, to hold a, cubing at home at least a month, um, once a month, just to make sure that um, we, we saw a lot of people saying that they've, they're, they're in a region where they've never had a chance to compete and they really love competing at keeping at home. Um, so we want to continue to hold that for them. And we also wanted to continue to hold it to kind of highlight some of the, the fast solvers in our community and to um, just have, have a good chance for everyone to come in and compete with each other. So um, I, I think we'll, we'll still be holding keeping at home comp just in, just for a while. So, Oh, good. Yeah. Glad to hear that. Yeah. I haven't been able to compete yet because I'm working most nights during the week now and <laughs> My schedule's yeah. been pretty crazy, as listeners probably can tell, because this is the first episode in a while. <laughs> but, yeah, I definitely hope to join you guys one of these competitions this summer. Yeah, we, we, hope, we hope to see you there at one of the competitions. You and all your listeners, it would be great to have you. That would be awesome. What has been some of the other feedback you've gotten from people? Um, I don't know, just, just a ton of positive feedback. Um, I've been super grateful that everything has been able to run so well and that, um, everyone's been so happy with it. I mean, we've, we've seen, like I mentioned, a lot of competitors who live in regions where they're just not able to access a competition and they were, they've been able to compete for the first time in a, in a more semi-realistic competition environment and, um, our Discord server has been great. We've seen a lot of people interacting on there, both during and after competitions. Um, it's, I don't know. It's just been a great sense of community with Cubing at home, and I've loved it so far. I see that you're on the um, WCA Quality Assurance Committee. Could you tell us about that? Yeah, so the WCA Quality Assurance Committee, um, we just work on a lot of little things in order to um, basically make sure that the WCA is getting, uh, that we have high quality standards and we're ensuring 
um, that we're maintaining those standards, um, whether it be staff or regional organizations or organizers or competition staff. We just want to make sure that we're hitting all of that. So uh, recently we've been working on a scramble accountability policy just to make sure that um, people are managing scrambles correctly and that the rules are clear on how they should be managed. Um, and then we've also been working on a set of organizer guidelines to kind of help out um, more inexperienced organizers, first-time organizers, or even um, long-time organizers with organizing competitions and just giving them advice, giving them a walkthrough of the process of organizing a competition. Cool. Okay. Where do you see yourself in the next few years with your cubing journey? Um, well, I'm actually going to be serving a religious mission for the next two years in Belém, Brazil. Um, after that, I'm hoping to come back. Um, I've, I've loved organizing competitions, so I hope I can continue to do that. Um, I've been learning three style recently. Um, I've been taking some coaching lessons with Jack Kai. I just took the first one the other day. Um, so I'm hoping to get into three blind quite a bit more and I'm, I'm just hoping to put a lot more work into cubing at home as well. And, uh, I'm hoping that it continues to grow and, um, provide such a, a fun opportunity for the community. Okay. Awesome. Is there anything else you wanted to mention before we wrap this up? Yet again, keeping at home five is on Saturday, May 30th. Um, it starts at 12 p.m. Um, Eastern Time. Uh, you can go on the website cubingathome.com um, to check for more info to see what time starts in your time zone and to register. So uh, I hope to see you and everyone else there. Okay, sounds great. Thanks, Sam, Neil, for coming on the podcast. Thanks for having me. I want to thank Samuel once again for taking the time to come on the podcast. We were able to work it out with our busy schedules. And yeah, I'm really happy I was able to do another interview so I could get another episode out. I know all of you are so excited to see another episode of the podcast. I did want to give some updates, though. I'll try to be brief. Just a quick summary. April 1st, the governor of my state issued a stay-at-home order, and on May 1st, issued a order everybody has to wear masks and it would be closed for another month. And then, finally, it's the end of May. We're beginning to see some signs of reopening, like barber shops are reopening and salons and more um, retail stores. I'm really not sure why, Salons and barbershops are opening first. How do you social distance when you're getting a haircut? Okay. But I, okay, I won't get too into my views on that. Uh, I'm just glad to see stuff reopening. Make sure you can still social distance, wear a mask if you want to. No governor can tell you, force you to wear a mask, okay? Where in the U.S. Constitution or even the state constitutions does it give the governors the power to order everybody to give a, wear a mask? And do people are being arrested for that? But everybody can still social distance, wash your hands a lot, use hand sanitizer, whatever you need to. And when you're when you have to go out, don't be dumb. Don't touch door handles unnecessarily grab them at the base so that's what i do don't touch where everybody touches them okay although now maybe everybody's grabbing at the bottom i don't know or top yeah now i digress i'm getting a little too into the politics of it but i'm really tired of these stay-at-home orders. At least I'm able to get out because I'm working almost a full-time schedule right now. So I'll keep putting out episodes as I can. I really appreciate all of you listening and your 
positive feedback. I know a good question. Let me know your thoughts on COVID-19, coronavirus, China virus, whatever you want to call it. You can either record a message in SpeakPipe at thecornercutterpodcast.com slash feedback or just shoot me an email, josh at thecornercutterpodcast.com. What do you think is going to happen with competitions? What are your concerns about going back to a competition? I want to hear your thoughts on this whole COVID-19 mess. Let me know and I'll read all your answers in the next episode. Maybe we'll do a cubing and COVID-19 show or something like that. So let me know. Josh at the cornercutterpodcast.com. And I think that's it for this week's episode. And tune in next time for episode 93 of the Corner Cutter Podcast.